One of the last sectors to be given the green light out of lockdown are entertainment venues, including the legal permission to hold large-scale weddings, funerals and naming ceremonies. The past 12 months have led to tens of thousands of vendors shutting their doors for good, as the entire sector lost billions of pounds in revenue. Well, for more on this, I'm now being joined by entertainment consultant Abbas Tijani, more popularly known as DJ Abbas. Abbas Tijani, or should I say DJ Abbas, I'm sure that's what the viewers want me to call you. Thank you so much for joining me on Channels Business Global. So, according to the Prime Minister, by June the 21st, nightclub venues may get the green light to reopen. Were you breathing a sigh of relief or do you join the chorus of calls for others in the sector and say it's just far too late? Well, we'll have to wait and wait almost a year as it is already. A year next month, my last gig was March 14th. So by this time, next month, it becomes a year. So to wait a few months, it was a huge sigh of relief from the whole DJ and nightclub fraternity. The fact that we would get the opportunity, hopefully, to start to ease back into performances and more importantly, earning an income, a welcome relief, certainly. I want to ask um, DJ Abbas, how has it been? I think particularly for people within our community, we know so many of us, all of us know somebody who knows somebody who lost their life uh, to COVID. But of course, as well, we can't deny that many um, of the people within our community rely on cash in hand services, don't they? All of these caterers, um, hall decorators, MCs, DJs, so many people have lost earnings over the past year. What has it been like? Because I know you are seen as the oracle in the community. Well, you're too kind. Um, it's been a very rough period. Like I said previously, um, my last gig was March 14, and that's just me as a DJ. The whole entertainment and um, events ecosystem has so many you know, specialists from cake, um, cake makers to DJs to MCs to um, decorators, and that whole industry went flat out in just you know snap of a finger. Um, however, you know, um, quite a few people have been quite ingenious in you know, finding other means because what has happened is a lot of business has now moved online. So you have some people who are perhaps caterers or food vendors now doing um, deliver special delivery service. I remember during Christmas, there were so many doing hamper services and also during Valentine. So some have actually been able to kick off online businesses. For me, I've um, um, started off a, a Zoom event on May the 29th, and we've done 37 editions, 200 to 300 people each and every Friday. We've been lucky enough to have some sponsored, a lot of support, tips and donations. So people have been their own ways trying to be ingenious because the fact remains that people still need to be entertained, COVID lockdown or not. And some have been able to put that into place. And um, I see a situation that at the end of this pandemic, some of those um, businesses that have kind of like started online during the lockdown would remain and will be remain as a support services for so many businesses thereafter. So it's been a, a mix of um, misfortunes and blessings. It has been a mixed bag. And I know you're one of the successful individuals who have managed to transfer your business online, because as you said, people still need to be entertained. People still want to celebrate uh, their birthdays and naming ceremonies, um, et cetera. But what lessons do you think have been learned, um, DJ Bass? And I'm talking about, you know, if we look at this kind of retrospectively, uh, because we know that so many people didn't have registered businesses. Of course, some of our viewers in Nigeria will say, ah, but the government were paying you to stay at home. But not everybody got those payments do you think you know the pandemic has changed the way some of our people do businesses in terms of being online because i'm sure before there are so many that just didn't have instagram accounts or online businesses i'll give you a typical example just last night my wife made me a very nice pot of um of um, nigerian soup and all the ingredients for that particular soup she made was sourced from a vendor who, who sells um Nigerian food online. So from your snail to your pomo to your to your crayfish, we actually purchased online and it was delivered to us. So like I said, the pandemic has been a mixed bag of misfortunes and blessings. It has opened up for in terms of blessings, a lot of people have, you know, jumped on the opportunity to be able to sell stuff online. If I look at the Nigerian, the African community, you know, it, the vast majority of us get our food from Asian markets. The 80% of that market is dominated by Asian wholesalers. But that has changed. That, that, now that narrative is starting to change with so many people now ordering this stuff directly from the Nigerians, ordering from Nigeria and now selling online. So there's an online business that has kicked off on the back of the pandemic. 
And I think that's going to be, it's been a huge plus for many who've not been able to kind of like um, achieve certain personal dreams they've always had in mind. Lockdown came, let me try this. Just this morning, I got another message that was just telling my wife, I got a message from somebody saying, we're not selling this online, oh, please don't come and patronize us, so, you know. So I think um, there's a major plus to come, to, to come away from this, it's just that people are now beginning to realize that we can do more online, unlike before. Uh, before I let you go, uh, DJ Abbas, June the 21st, um, some people are saying that should be called Independence Day here in Britain. Uh, that is when we're expecting a full reopening of society. The Prime Minister has said there is no going back. Lives will still be lost, but we cannot cripple the economy anymore. Do you expect to see, you know, those big prosperity churches to, you know, be at full capacity? Do you expect some of the local restaurants we all know and all uh, patronise to be at full capacity? Will you be entertaining in some of the venues that you did last year? Or do you think some people are going to be cautious? Well, the, um, in that same speech, the Prime Minister did also, there was a caveat that... Um, the reopening, because I should probably know the reopening for the internal in and venues inside have been um, left to the very, very last level. And the whole reason for that, the caveat is, um, it will be data driven based on data from hospitals and how the COVID vaccine has kind of like worked well with the population. So uh, while all of us are excited at the, at the chance of coming back come June, the, the fact is there are certain nightclub owners that have lost their clubs. Mm. There are certain venue owners that have lost their venues during this lockdown. They don't own it anymore. So we'd have to start to deal with, you know, sourcing new venues in certain parts of, of, of town. And like I said, um, as much as we like to come back fully, I doubt it that will be the case. It's going to be a step at a time. And, and some people still have to deal with this mentally. Some have to deal with it financially. And I don't think all that can happen in just a few months. I think that would take a stretch, but it's still a welcome relief that we're back on the 21st. It is a welcome relief. I'll definitely uh, be listening to wherever you'll be playing because I'm sure that is going to be a sold out venue, whatever is the case. And hopefully we'll be able to get to the Nigerian corner at the Notting Hill Carnival, though that's still very far away. Abbas Tijani, DJ Abbas, a director at DJA Media, DJ, of course, an entertainment consultant. Thank you so much for joining me on Channel's Business Global.